of YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. We're live everywhere right now. Today, we're talking about a topic that may have raised a few eyebrows. The fact that the, the art of cold emailing is dead. Uh, so I've brought in one of the best guests for it. Just before I jump into that, some housekeeping items. These recordings are always after uh, available afterwards. The best place to watch those generally for the quality-wise is on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Uh, and also on any podcast platforms, you know, Spotify, um, Apple. Just type in Lavender and you'll find us. But today, we're talking about cold emailing, what's wrong with it, some better ways to approach it. And to help me talk about that, I've got someone who's got some really spicy thoughts on this. He sent me this like really charged DM and I was like, I have to bring him in. I was already a fan, came from Refract, I've also read, and as you can see, marked up his and a couple of his colleagues' books. Everyone, please welcome Mark Akers. <laughs> Hi, Will. Good to see you. How you doing? You okay? I am splendid, mate. I'm having some time off right now, actually. I've got a week off, so... Uh... You've disturbed my vacation. I'm just, I'm just messing around with you. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, no, really well. I, I got on vacation next week, so uh, feel free to disturb mine uh, next week. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure I put a live. I, I invite you on. I'm only messing around with you, um, Mark. We hate to bury the lead around here, so like the first thing I like to do is because people might like drop off. Their internet might die. There might be a power cut. I like to lead with the 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 best part. So I'm just going to give sure. you a soapbox right now and say, what's the one thing you'd like to say to everyone here listening? Uh, when it comes to cold emailing. Okay, right. So I'm in a bit of a feisty mood. It's been one of those days where um, <laughs> I, I think the first thing is anyone that's here now, probably a lot of this they will be aware of. And there's a few things that, of course, they can improve upon, but they won't be committing some of the problems that I see. But I think for context, what's really helpful is started – um, started a business, co-founded my sales coach. And the reason I'm telling you that is my inbox from January 5th, brand new, right? It didn't exist, that inbox. It's not like it was on data providers. It's a brand new inbox from January 5th. I believe, so I was, I've was i spent two nights in a row, sort of just when my wife goes to bed, writing some notes for this. Um, my inbox 230 days old okay and i think what's really helpful for the monday prospector is to try and get an understanding of what they're up against um if i told you in that time so where is it i've got it written down here um my inbox as of 10 o'clock last night in 229 days yesterday has 10,452 emails in it that that's seven days a week, 45 emails a day. And again, that inbox was brand new, right? Like I say, it's not like you could have found it on a data provider. It's not like people would be desperate to speak to me and my, my company at that point. So I think just to show the volume of emails that can come into an inbox. Um, the things that are frustrating me at the moment, though, is just the, the lack of quality in emails that, that I'm seeing, right? So I've actually got two today to share right I, I won't read out who send it there's no there's no good in that right but i'll no. talk about how you improved so so first of all right i think with the context of if you're going to email someone i'm i'm pretty much a dream person to email in the sense of right there's loads of content out there i, I write on content I, I like to say every day that's a lie sometimes i just don't get around to it but probably four times a week every week for four years, a post on LinkedIn. I've written a book, which you kindly lifted up and maybe you'll lift it up again for a little bit longer for other people to see. Uh, um, but it's got, you know, there's a, there's a book out there, right? Um, I wrote that I'm coming on this, this webinar with you to talk about the state of emails. My phone number is on my LinkedIn profile. I, it couldn't be more of a dream prospect in the sense of there's content for days out there, right? Here's, here's the emails that I've had today. So the first one, the subject line, quick question mark. I'm, I'm okay with that. It's not a terrible subject line. But then I think this is a sin that a lot of people will be committing, even those that have come here today without realizing it. It's they think they're personalizing when they're not. And what I mean by that is, they're just telling you something that's really obvious. It's not 
real personalization so the personalization they went for was i was browsing social today you come across my sales coach i love how your platform offers comprehensive sales coaching and training to empower sales professionals right it's okay but that's generic personalization. yeah yeah well, they, they, there's nothing there's no thought gone into that right no you could have easily easily gone mark land your linkedin profile so you saw you doing a, a webinar on emails with with aiken there so really easy but this is the bit that frustrates me with the personalization one it's really generic two it gets eroded in the next paragraph because there's no link there's no bridge it literally goes from browse social today come across my sales coach love the platform and how it helps people we're going to help you find more pipeline with sophisticated market pipeline strategy. It only takes 60 minutes and we'll book you 40 meetings a month. Right. Like just completely undoes the personalization straight into a self-serving product pitch. You can mm. so easily try to link what we're trying to do, which is help sales professionals fulfill their potential and hit their goals. We're loading them up with meetings so they can do that. Really easy link. Um, the next thing is, so I'll tell you what else I did like, though, give them some credit. There was uh, a PS at the bottom. I'm a big fan of PSs, but that's one same. email. Did you can say something there, Will? No, I just said same. So, yeah, uh, just to, to recap, you get, you've had an inbox for 200 days. You got, on average, 50 emails a day in there. Uh, you haven't had that long. And you're not even like, a, I mean, you are someone who's senior at your company and a company owner. But like, we got to think about the context of like CEOs out there who might be running much, much oh. larger organizations being targeted by many, many more salespeople as well. Well, well, I'm relative, I'm a nobody. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that's, I, like, I, I don't <laughs> I didn't want to like, take away any credit from you, Mark. <laughs> no, 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 like that's fine. I, I accept, but this is my point, right? I, I don't even represent the average email inbox because it's brand new. I don't represent anybody that works at like a huge SaaS company. Like I'm trying to show you if this is my world, what's it like for them? And that's what the people are here today are up against. And I, I do want to make sure people leave with actionable advice, right? But yeah. I suppose I'm just trying to bring context. Here's the other one I got today, right? This made me laugh. So Mark, are you like other CEOs? That's the subject line. I'm not a CEO, right? Then it's like, Mark, I've spoken to other CEOs this week like you, right? Again, like just lazy there, right? Not, not even my right job title. And then here's what I do like. And, and again, this is a tip for people. They do lead with a problem, but there's no so. Let me tell you what the problem is. It says, I speak with other CEOs like you, and they all think their current payroll process is too manual and error prone. Okay. So there's a problem there. But this yep. is this is what most people do. They'll have a problem. Here's the thing: it's missing the so what, yeah. right? And that's that's what I want people listening to think about. When you list a problem, what's the so what? So in in this case, what's the so what if I spend too much time or I've got errors happening on my payroll? That's what's missing, and that's what really makes it jump out to prospects. Um, the next thing that really grinds my gears. They've offered me a hundred pound Deliveroo voucher <laughs> for, for a, um, a demo. That's a couple of dinners. I mean, well, maybe not for, maybe not for the, the issue no. is, I, I've said this before, the voucher thing, it tempts me because I'm not an executive who makes a hundred pounds an hour. But a lot of the people who offer these vouchers actually probably make a little bit more than that. So their time isn't actually worth that. And they probably don't use Deliveroo. Um, so I, I always think the vouchers are such a mess. But anyway, sorry, go on. You had something to say about that. Well, I was just going to say, it just encourages bad behavior, right? Like yeah. if I wanted to, of course, I could take that hundred pound voucher. It is the reality. That'd be great. But I'm not morally, I'm not going to take a debt. One, I'm not a CEO, so I'm a bad fit. Two, yeah. I don't have those problems. Three, I just feel it's a bit cheap, like turning mm. up. Slowly. It's like someone who's not really your friend going, come out tonight, I'll buy you a pint. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Really nice. Just so you're not lonely. Um, here's, here's some other things though, right? I've got another email today, right? Saying that because I'm big in the aviation industry, would I like to advertise on like, you know, videos on aeroplanes, right? Yeah. Uh, the, 
aviation in? I can't understand where that's come from. Yeah, honestly, I've sat there racking my brains thinking, what have I done to be considered big in the aviation industry? And the yeah. best I've got is I've run some pilots in my time, pun intended. But it's just absolutely like, again, like where, where's this personalization come from? So that, that frustrates me. Um, other thing, here's some other things that I've noticed, right, in terms of what's killing email is so yeah, people think they're personalizing, but they're not. Um, mm. Emojis in subject lines, oh, um, gift cards, um, marketing managers. I'm noticing that a lot. Marketing managers doing the work of an SDR, and you know what? The emails read like a marketing email. Very self-serving product pitches. It's not about me. I find that really frustrating. Um, have you noticed this one, Will? Right, I've seen this loads the fake email chain where they go, my colleague, oh. so-and-so, yes, sorry, and you scroll down and you see they've put together this fake little uh, chain of... Uh, oh, wait, they actually, they've actually actually copied and pasted like a fake chain into the bottom of the email. Yeah. So it looks like... Been a... Oh, I've, I they... thought you were referring to like the classic RE, like it looks like you've no. been correspondent before. You're telling me there's a real fake chain underneath the email that's on you. Yeah, yeah, but they make sure that there's no getting back to them. So this is like my colleague, uh, Veronica suggested we reach out she's out of office for the next two weeks right so like almost telling me don't bother with her and then you scroll down it's like hi i was thinking about mark acres at my sales coach why don't you drop him a mail i think it'd be interesting like trying to create this like fake interest or intrigue um mm -hmm. so there's that you 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 slow me down will but i have come into this meeting in a bit of a feisty mood um, all right now let's get I, I got, I, can i spice you back up is there any way i can get you back in feisty, feisty mode what can i do for you no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still there. You something else that's annoying. Um, Go on. Well, I, I would like to know why you think, why, why do you think all these problems are even happening in the first place? I mean, like, they don't come from nowhere. Right, here we go. Bad managers is, it, and I don't mean bad as in bad people, right? We're, we're all good people at heart trying to do a good job, right? No one sets out to do a bad job, right? Here, here's the thing. Almost every sales manager, this was me, gets promoted because they were a top performer, a good rep. The company doesn't want to lose them. If you don't promote them, someone else will, et cetera. So in sales, like just by being a good seller, you can become a manager of people. That doesn't make you a good manager. That doesn't mean you're a good leader. It doesn't mean you're a good coach. Where, you're, where you are good is you've lived and experienced the problems that people that you're managing probably have had, right? Like you've probably had a deal where they ghost you or they try and negotiate or they pull pull of the competitor card out. So you can help. Tactically, you can help in that sense. But what that doesn't mean is that you know how to coach someone to be better. And it doesn't mean you've got the, the will to do that either, right? Like to, to, to want to coach people requires you as, if you're a top performer, you, you're probably quite selfish in terms of where you spend your time, how focused you are. It's a whole different thing, right? Your your number is the team's number now. Um, and as a manager, it's really easy to look at the metrics of activity, right? I can I can literally go, right, we're, we're going to have a one-to-one -one, dashboard. Okay, you've been busy, mate. Great work. Oh, you booked this many meetings. Said, Fantastic. What takes time and putting yourself out there is to go, let's look at the quality of these emails. Let's listen to the quality of your cold calls. Let's try and give you feedback and, and actually put myself out there of trying to help you become a better seller to hit the goal set of you by me or my boss and to help you fulfill your potential. That is a totally different skill set that just because you're a good rep doesn't mean you get automatically. And the problem with emails is managers let people get away because they measure them on activity, not on quality, because that's quick metrics. That, that, and then obviously there's loads of other things we like automation has, has really killed this. Like as a, as an SDR or an AE that's been told to prospect, I can knock out five emails to one person in a minute and look like I've been really busy. Whereas like back in my day, which makes me sound old, you couldn't do that. Like, I genuinely remember the first time I saw a sequence and I, I nearly fell off my chair. Like, I couldn't, but like this was 10 years ago, you know. So lots of lots of things that have led to that. Um, let's see, I've, I've put down some other things. So 
Oh, God. Uh, you know While you pull that up, I do think uh, the leadership side of things, yeah. in terms of the activity, I've never really thought about why that is there's been incentivizing and, and rewarding of this type of behavior. But you're right. Without diving in and looking into it, because what I often find is when a manager jumps in and actually takes a look at things, someone like yourself who's in a more of a senior position or a manager or even VP of sales, if they can look at a sales rep's email and say, does that look like the crap that I get? Then why would they continue to encourage that? But I don't think they even, some of them are even looking and that's, that's probably where the miss is. Yeah, yeah. Again, right, sales managers wear many hats, right? They they are interviewing, onboarding, they're running yep. one-to-ones. So many have their own number, forecasting, training, so many hats. But the number one thing that they can do for their people is to coach them. But that is a skill. That that takes time. That takes will. That means you have to remove any biasness that you have remove any connection you have to the company goal and really sit down with someone and go, let's create a plan for you to hit the goal. Let's coach you to fulfill your potential and accelerate towards the goals we've set as quickly as possible. And managers aren't skilled in doing that. Most of them aren't because they, they've been put in a role based on revenue generated rather than caliber of, of sales leader. Absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned you had something. Uh, no, I, I covered it all in terms of why what? why I think we're in this place. But I, I mean, I've got I've got seven pages of Google Docs. Let's, well, let's let's things. move on to maybe then. Like, I love I love the the fire you brought, Mark. Basically, to recap, inboxes are wild. Uh, you know, sales teams are incentivizing the wrong types of things, namely activity. That's easier than ever because of the rise of automation and sequencing tools and everything like that, which means that people can just send out these emails that are kind of half personalized or personalized in a poor way, that lack any kind of segue that ties in what they've seen into a real problem. And those problems, that they, when they are included, often lack an impact that's going to make someone go, okay, this is why I should care about this thing that someone's reaching out to me that they can help with. But have I, have I summed everything up pretty well before we jump into maybe some ways to, uh, to make that better? Will cracking job. <laughs> you, that's a that's a discovery call framework right there all right so someone's already asked the question what should we be doing instead in the chat they said how long should we be spending on this then um so what do you think is the better way so i do feel like we've come full circle and this this happens in life right like that you, you you find these like silver bullets that work for a while and everyone jumps right and that that has happened with email email absolutely still has a place to and a key part to play in your sales um, multi-channel cadence here's the reality you have to you have to spend a bit of time writing an email and the way the way i look at it when i'm writing an email could this person feasibly think this has gone to anybody else right is this for them and only for them and there are times when i can write an email and i literally can say to my team i know that's going to get a response I just know it will. Like there's there's no way that can't get a response. And and that comes down to first of all, you've got to spend a bit of time researching the prospect. People don't want to do that because that takes time and takes them away from their metrics again, they're measuring the wrong thing. But this is a multi-channel approach, right? You can very quickly get some personalization on somebody. They they might not all write on LinkedIn. I, I totally accept that, but I bet here's some things that you can think about: mutual connections previous companies they've worked at, college or universities they've been to, um, company website, blog, share price, Google their name. Like they, You will find something for, for a lot of people, particularly people on this webinar. Again, like the, the, the audience that we have, Will, and the people that are going to come to this, they will find something. The next thing is you leave the subject line till the end. I think people, one, write the subject line first, and two, they think it absolutely has to be really linked to the body of the email. It doesn't have to be totally linked, but yeah. you have to personalize. And most people here will, will personalize, but they won't really be personalizing. They will be stating something beyond like obvious, like you just started this gig, you just had investment, I see you're recruiting. That's not personalized. That's just telling me something that everyone else is telling me. What you have to do is go beyond that and personalize from the heart about something about that person here's the thing everybody in life you will me everybody here their favorite subject in the world is themselves hmm. so tell them something about themselves 
make it about them. And then just think this line needs to get them to read the next line. That line needs to get them to read the next line. And this is the bit that people miss now. You've got your personalization, but it needs to feel sincere. How do you link that to a problem? And that's called the bridge. And I want to say chapter 16 in the book. This isn't here to promote the book. Like, you know, you can get this stuff for free on my LinkedIn and whatnot. But like the bridge is key. Otherwise, like that authenticity just gets lost. Kind of like that first email I read out. Like so a you want a bridge. Without, yeah. a, without a good segue. Yeah, a segue. Perfect, right? Here's the next thing. I know most people here, again, the fact that they're here is testament to themselves, right? They, they invest in themselves. Most people here will mention problems in their email. But I bet most people forget about the so what. What's the big bad thing that happens if that problem doesn't get resolved? And that's the example that I gave, right? The email I received just this morning, mm -hmm. um, CEOs like me, allegedly, worry about their payroll process. It takes too much time um, and it's error prone. Okay, what happens if it's error prone? That's the bit that's missing from a lot of emails. The next thing that's really important is the call to action needs to just feel like it's easy to buy into. Let me see if I can dig this out quickly. So here's, here's the asks of emails I've had this week. Yeah. Again, to put it to life, 25.9% of the emails this week have been salespeople asking for my time. Okay. And look, everyone's got the same. It isn't about me saying my time's precious. Time's precious for everybody, right? Yeah. Um, but I've got one that asked me for 20 minutes, one that 30 minutes, 115, 145, 130, 115, one for 60 to give me a complimentary demo. Like I would have paid for it, right? Um, and then the, the aviation, comp uh, aviation one wanted 30 minutes of my time. So just from those selections, that's four hours of time that I'm being asked for, right? Mm -hmm. I, here's something that I think people might not consider is time can trigger people. Everyone feels busy, right? And everyone is busy. Like their yeah. reality is their world, right? Like I always tell this story. So my, my mum works in Costa Coffee. She will not answer her phone or reply to me if I text her. She'll be like, Mark, I'm, I'm too busy. And yeah. I made the mistake once saying, Oh, like for cost of coffee, like you pick up your phone. She's like, you don't know how busy I am. The dishwasher's broke. The queue's at the door. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas coffees have just been released, which are bloody highlight of my year. Um, <laughs> she, then, she then called me the following Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, I saw it as an opportunity to have a bit of a swipe. I was like, you do know you've called me whilst I'm at work now. And she honestly went, you just work at a desk. And it just, it, it was a realization for me that, Everybody in their own world is busy, right? Yeah. But when you ask someone for time, it can trigger them because if you if, if you ask any decision maker to look at their calendar, it's ramo, right? Yeah. It, it's slammed this week, it's slammed next week, it's probably busy the week after. So being asked for time can stress someone out. So actually, like calls to action, I, I really detest when people say, can I have 15 minutes? Can I have 20 minutes? Can I have, because it's about you. Make mm. it about them. One of my favorite calls to actions are like, does this sound like something we can talk about? Would you be open to learning more, right? Just really casual and lighthearted and an easy thing to, to buy into. Mm -hmm. And then finally, if people aren't doing this, a PS, a PS at the bottom of the emails, just where you, you just have a little sign off, show who you are as a human, show what you know about them, something mm -hmm. that might put on their face and that's the thing that they'll read first by the way um when they open their emails that they see the first that they go straight to the ps catches their eye so you kind of got two chances of catching their attention um and whilst about emails this is a really important tip for anybody sending linkedin messages linkedin does this weird thing when it starts from the bottom up so if you send a long linkedin message weirdly it, try this out. It pops up at the bottom of the message. It's like an anchor. So I have to scroll to the top, but all I see is the, the request. I, I see 30 minutes time. I just think, oh, God, I can't go with that. Gone. So, yeah, that, that's the sort of things I want people to take away from this. Once you know that, then write the subject line. 
because then 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 you'll have a good steer of what you want to talk about because you've got the body of the email so good subject line right at last personalization that is beyond telling someone what's obvious bridge or segue that to the problems make the problems have a so what have an easy call to action and have a nice ps that is the recipe for a great email and that's what i know people here will be doing three four of those things but it's doing all of them that, that will really help people yeah so love that there was a couple of questions all of that can be very short as well right i think that's something that people miss they think it has to be personalized it's be a problem it's going to loads of detail this could literally be like less than 75 words oftentimes each of those yeah. things you mentioned could be literally its own line boom that way it's not as busy because as you said you get a lot of emails you don't have time to read these long ones um do you want to double click oh, i hate that phrase why'd i say that just want to tap on something you said right i love the the ps because I, I like to put a little thing especially if i notice something that i can't quite figure out how to tie into my product or the problem or challenge i solve in the email right i could be like mark hope you hope your mom's still still crushing the lattes over at costa or whatever it might be right you know because i could hear that but it's very hard for me to tie costa into hey you might not be getting as many email replies as you'd like that could be leading some reps to miss quotes or your entire team right so how do you think about you said beyond stating the obvious and i believe that oftentimes what i encourage people to do is try and find something about the business because then it's easy to tie into a business challenge or problem that might be costing them when you try and find something very personalized how can, can you can you think of like ways to actually tie that to your product or, or service for example myself and you you're going to try and sell me your services today and you knew i'd been on this this webinar and i'd just taken some pto how might you go ahead and personalize the email uh, and type it up on yourself. Yeah. So, so great. This is this is the hard bit, right? That that's why, like, just thinking of generic examples is, is hard. And, th and this is yeah. where good SDRs separate themselves. Just spitballing ideas here, though, right? Will, I saw you had Mark Akers, questionable guest, on your recent <laughs> Lavender Live. Here's something that I loved about it, and I just want to say thank you for taking the time to put that on. The reason I loved it is because I'm trying to better myself as a sales professional. And here, here's some of the challenges that people often have with doing that. And I would link it to emails being a key part of their strategy, low open rates, low response rates. Lavender can help with that as an example. Or, or my sales coach can, can help you by coaching you to, to, to um, fulfill your potential. But it's, I, I think one of the best things you can do is highlight something someone's done and say thank you. Like, Will, thanks for putting this on. I learned something from this. Or someone could message me tomorrow, Mark, thanks for going on and almost bursting a blood vessel, moaning about the state of emails. Here's what I loved. Thank you. Well, I'm going to feel so good, right? And I'm going to feel almost compelled to reply back to somebody because there's an emotion there, right? And I think that's the thing. Like, sometimes people are afraid to show who they are in emails. And like, I think the, the one thing that I always try, I just try to be myself, right? I like, and I think people can, can feel like they can't do that or, or shouldn't do that. Um, can I pick up on one of the comments that's just come into the chat? Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. We have got a couple minutes left. So I want to make sure we have time for you to maybe plug something as well, but go for it. I'm not here to plug anything like that. I appreciate right. that. I'll, um, I'll, just... I'll plug your book for you one more time. This is a great book, everyone. One of the best prospecting dedicated books I've read. Um, I'm sure you'll bring out something on demos and discovery soon. And I bet that I, I'm willing to bet that's your next endeavor. Am I... <sighs> try, to get, try, to get, try to get Rich Smith and Stuart Taylor together to write the second book <laughs> is a bloody pain in the ass. Um, so Daniel here, he's, he said using uh, or not using PS is something many experts disagree with. It is the bottom line, Daniel went to everybody. There's no such thing as a sales expert because you can't be an expert on something that's opinions, right? If, if we were here giving a maths or science lecture, I'm either right or wrong. Someone, like, I'll give the two extremes. Someone will listen to this and think I'm the biggest idiot they've ever listened to. Other yep. extreme will think this is the best half hour they've invested this year and everybody else is somewhere in between. No one's right or wrong, right? It, it's... When, when I, I really hate that like sales expert talks it's just not true you can't be an expert in something that's subjective and opinion based do you love that do you love that. uh there's a there's a quote i actually heard and i think it's a good point to finish on as well with sales it's about trying to find your own style oftentimes what works for you testing 
and testing a lot, not just once, you know, you might hear this and go, oh, I'm going to go try and send a personalized email now. Don't send three and just give up because that's not a sample. That's nothing, right? You couldn't make three cold calls and be like, cold calling doesn't work. You'd have to make a few hundred. Got to make sure you get those repetitions in there. But always remember there's more than one bit way to be good at sales. Me and Mark could say the exact same thing and the exact same email and the exact same cold call and get vastly different results because I'm much better look at the markets. So on that note, um, sorry, I just like to offend the guests I bring on. Um, but on that note, you know, that's a very good point to finish on, I think. Anything else you'd like to finish on before we uh, we hit the end button? No, look, two, two, th two things. One, I'm going to take a picture, Will, with me and you. I'll promote it right. on, on LinkedIn. That's, that's good. So let's do that big. now. So, right, I'll, I'll take the picture on three. Let's let's try and look like we're having a great time. Uh, one, two, three. A Great. Uh, and then, look, the only thing I'd say is if you've found anything I said valuable, just give us a follow on LinkedIn. I do write and share content semi semi regular basis, like four times a week. It'd be great to be connected. But uh, if you thought it was that rubbish, don't worry about it. Beautiful. Thanks so much for coming on, Mark. Really appreciate you. Cheers, well.